right, so now we're going to paint our poinsettias. And what I am using to paint is a water brush that has um, a reservoir in the handle to put the water in. So the nice thing about that is I don't need to have a jar with um, water sitting on my desk and possibly something that I could knock over because I'm a little bit of a klutz and I definitely would knock it over. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to paint my background. I'm dipping it, in, dipping it into my paint palette here. This is filled with Distress Ink reinkers. I have lots of Distress pads, so I have the reinkers to fill those pads. So the other thing that is nice about using a pen or a water brush that has water right in the handle is I can um, add a little bit of water to dilute my color. And I love using these Distress um, reinkers for water coloring simply because um, I can lighten the color but it is quite bright to start out with so I have a lot of range in what colors I'm using here. So I'm just quickly doing the background here and any time I want a little bit of a darker color I go into that original one on the side there. Now this is just to get some color on the background just because I didn't want it to be completely white. And by embossing the image first, I have little ridges where the stamped um, image is. So I don't need to really worry about going into that. Even if I did go a little bit into where the stamped image is, my blue that I'm gonna be painting for the poinsettia is darker than this color here that I'm putting on the background. So I don't really need to worry too much about it little bit in there. Oh, that was a poinsettia leaf. So I will be fixing that when I go to do my poinsettias. Now before I start painting my poinsettias, I'm going to want to make sure that this background is dry. Simply because if I were to start painting the poinsettias while this background is still wet, if I happen to go over my little ridge line there, I would have blue seeping into my background. So there we go. I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll see you to cut, color the poinsettias in just a moment. It's in the same video, but I'll see you. All right, so my background is dry and it really doesn't take very long. So the first color I'm going to paint for the base of my poinsettia, and I'm only going to show you one. The other two are exactly the same. I'll show you the full one here. So I've got my weathered wood in my Distress Reinker. And I always have this palette here with my Distress Reinkers. Um, they never dry on this palette, so it's great. I can go in and start watercoloring anytime I want. The only thing, because they don't ever dry, is I have to store it horizontally. So you don't want to tip it on its side. You're just going to have paint that's running into each other if you do that. So I'm starting in the center and I'm moving my paper around. And that's because I want the darkest of the colors in the center. And we're going to elaborate on that a little bit. So it's not going to be just this one color. I'm going to add other, other colors to it to give it a little bit more depth but I want to add a little bit of a base layer, as well as the fact that by putting this base layer, this whole poinsettia is damp. So the color, next color I'm going to use is going to move a little bit better. So next I'm going to use Chip Sapphire. And these are the only three colors that I'm actually using on this particular um, card. So I've got old paper for my background, I've got weathered wood and Chip Sapphire. So I went in there with my darkest color and I don't want to have that much of that on my brush. So I have a little napkin here. You could use a little paper towel, whatever you want. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that off of my brush and then go back in and I'm spreading that around. And it's really easy to do because that petal is wet. So it's very easy to go in and just spread that color around. So I'm doing exactly the same thing for all the petals, working my way from the outside in. So I went in with the chip sapphire and now I'm gonna spread it out. Because this second one here, the color wasn't quite as dark, I didn't have to take it off of my brush, brush as much. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. So it sometimes depends on the um, size of the area that you're working on as well. And some of these poinsettia leaves kind of go into each other, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell exactly where one leaf starts and one ends. So I wouldn't worry too much about it by the time that you're done. It's definitely going to look like a poinsettia, so you don't need to be sweating whether you colored something exactly right or not. By the time that we're done, it's going to look like a poinsettia. 
So anytime you feel like you've got a little bit too much color, tap it on your paper towel here. If you find your brush is too dry, go back to the paper towel and squeeze your brush and you'll get a little bit of extra water onto your brush. The nice thing with having a brush that has water right in the handle is also when I need to change a color, I don't need to dip it in paper or in water. I simply go and I squeeze my brush and I've got a clean brush to work with. So now I'm gonna go into my center here. And a lot of these center point setup petals kind of um, run into each other. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the details there. I just wanna make sure to get that when I have one of these bigger petals because you're definitely gonna see shading and stuff like that on the bigger ones here. All right, so now you know what to do to, to paint the poinsettia. I'm gonna do the same thing on these other two half poinsettias and I'll see you in the next video for assembling our card.